Hello, this is Gernge with a quick tip to help with displacement in Redshift. I know displacement can be a bit cumbersome because it requires additional geometry in Redshift, so we'll talk about the various settings, set up some better defaults, and some other tricks that I've come up with to make our lives easier. Now, there are a lot of other tutorials here on YouTube that go more into depth about displacement and the settings, so I would encourage you to watch those if you're still struggling with it. Since this is a quick tip, I'm going to have to skip over settings I don't change to keep the details to a minimum. But once we're done, I hope you'll be more confident with the settings on the tessellation tag, as well as how we can use the displacer deformer in Cinema 4D to make our lives a little bit easier. To kick things off, let's look at the tessellation tag. Our first object has the redshift object tag. I've only adjusted the maximum displacement and displacement scale to give this a more apparent visual result. First up is screen space adaptive. This means based on our camera angle, Redshift will try to adapt or reduce how many polygons it needs. Minimum edge length can be a bit nebulous. If screen space adaptive is enabled, then this unit is in pixels, as in how many pixels on screen can a tessellated or segmented polygon be? A higher number means bigger polygons, which in displacement terms can mean less detail. If screen space adaptive is off, then minimum edge length is in world units. In this case, in Cinema 4D, that would be centimeters probably. Last is max subdivisions. This is a pretty self-explanatory one. Bigger number equals more polygons. So let's hop over to this other object with the modified tessellation settings, and we'll walk through what I like to change. Now, the first thing to note is how well this is performing interactively. Of course, the big reason for that is turning off screen space adaptive. And this is the response with screen space adaptive on. We'll see a very noticeable difference in interactivity with screen space adaptive off, since it is such a heavy calculation phase, which hurts the time to first pixel. Another reason I don't like screen space adaptive personally is animating cameras can lead to popping or flickering geo as the polygons off in the distance wind up recalculating throughout the animation. Another preference of mine, now again I want to stress this is optional, certainly do some experimenting on your own, but I like the minimum edge length of zero because it's going to force the max subdivision across your entire surface. So if you work with smaller objects and keep to a lower max subdivision value, you might be able to get away with a min edge length of zero as well. If not, you can leave it at one or four. If you give these settings a try and you wind up liking them, we can save this as the default so that anytime you create this tag, they'll have these settings already set up. Before doing this though, please make sure to experiment and get these settings dialed to your liking. You might do certain things routinely which are different from me, and so you would benefit from different defaults. So with things set up just like this, I'll go to edit, set as default. So if I delete the tag and make a new one, we'll see that all I have to do is click on this geometry override, and then all my settings are right back where I left them. Pretty neat. Next up, we'll use the displacer deformer and a subdivision surface in combination with lower tessellation settings to help give Redshift a bit of a break. Now, I don't use this trick all the time, only when I have a good reason to need real geometry in the C4D viewport, but there are occasions where that's necessary. When doing this, there's a particular way I like to organize the object manager for optimal results. The example on the left has the landscape object with a displacer as a child and the subdivision as a parent. This means we take the low poly landscape, displace it, and then we subdivide or smooth that entire result. Alternatively, the example on the right has the landscape and the subdivision surface as siblings to the displacer within this null. The advantage to this is the low poly landscape gets divided and then we displace that entire result. This method gives a more detailed representation of the geometry in the viewport, which is what I prefer. When setting this up yourself, you want to make sure on the texture tag of your terrain, if you're using this length or tile amount, you match that setting over here on the displacer in the shading tab. Otherwise, the texture tiling won't line up. Keep in mind, the subdivision surface has its own subdivision amounts. So on the redshift tessellation tag, your maximum subdivisions value should be adjusted accordingly so that you don't blow up your computer. And that'll cover everything for this quick tip about displacement in redshift. I hope that it helps you and makes the displacement a bit faster and smoother to work with. After watching this, if you're still not much of a fan of using displacement in redshift, which 
I wouldn't blame you. Perhaps take a look at my video about parallax occlusion mapping. It's a shading based trick that we can set up to fake the look of displacement, and it runs pretty quickly. But anyway, if you found this information useful, please like the video and perhaps subscribe to see more of my quick tips. Thank you so much for watching.